You know, one of the really fun things about water drop macro photography is that you can do anything you want. Now I'm using a leaf here uh, to hold the water drop, but it could be anything that you can dream up. And as far as what's being refracted in the water drop, I mean, often we see flowers, but as you can see here, it can be anything. I can tell by the comments and by emails that I get that macro photography is a really popular subject with all of you photographers out there. So today, we're going to take a look at five tips that will help you with your water drop macro photography. When we're talking about macro photography and water drops, what we're really talking about is refraction, trying to capture something inside of the water drop. Here are five quick tips on that. So what we have here is an enclosed area. You can build it yourself. This happens to be pre-made. And the idea is that if you do not uh, want extraneous things to come into your uh, water droplet, you can enclose it. Now, this particular model has something that you can also use uh, to keep out the sky. You can put a top on it. I didn't do it for this project, but you can do it. So tip one, enclose your project. Tip two, use glycerin. See this over here? That's glycerin. Um, you can use water, but glycerin is a little more sticky and it adheres and stands up a little bit higher, um, makes better drops on surfaces, different surfaces. So tip two, use glycerin. Tip three, use an eyedropper or a hypodermic needle, whatever. I use an eyedropper and it just uh, makes it a whole lot easier than spraying on things. You can use a spray uh, bottle too, but for this particular kind of thing, I prefer to use an eyedropper, but the choice, of course, is yours. And this view shows you the background that I'm using, which in this case happens to be a checkerboard, but it can be absolutely anything that your mind can dream up. And here you can see the effect of the checkerboard. The background is very blurry on this one because I used a shallow depth of field of f5.6 on my macro lens. And quite frankly, I prefer to see a little bit of what's going on to make sense of what is happening in the water drop. So in this next shot, shot at f11, you get to see a sense and have a sense of what's going on in the background. And it makes a little more sense of what's going on in the water droplet, at least uh, in my opinion. How do you feel about it? This next shot was the shot that you saw off the top of the show. And uh, it just points out that you can change the angle of the leaf and move the camera around a little bit to get a little bit of a different effect. Now, this is where refraction comes in, and this is tip number four. If you are refracting something that is uh, sensitive to whether it's upside, upside down or right side up, then make sure that you place it upside down because refraction will cause it to be upside down. So uh, this water drop captures a Canadian flag and I had the flag in the background. You can see it blurry in the background here, but it was upside down so that it would appear right side up in the, in the water drop. And you know, you can have lots of fun uh, with this kind of thing. Uh, take the uh, flag of your country and see if you can place it inside a water drop. And tip number five, and this may seem obvious, but it's really important, especially when it comes to macro photography, is one, experiment. Feel free to try everything. And the other thing is be really patient because it may not go the way you want it to go the first few times. Be patient and uh, you'll uh, be happy with that. Feel free to ask questions or to comment down below and to subscribe as well. The possibilities are absolutely endless. And I hope that that gives you a little bit of a jump start for your water drop macro photography projects. Until next time, I'm Ray Scott reminding you that it's not what you see, it's how you see it. And I'll see you soon.